Good evening guys and welcome back to my channel. So tonight I have another fragrance review video for you. So if you're new to my channel, these videos are basically where I take somewhat similar fragrances and I sort of pit them up against each other and compare and contrast them and tell you which one I prefer or if I could only recommend one, which one that would be. And I really find it handy for myself because it helps me put things into perspective if I have too many perfumes and I need to declutter one of them or if I have a viewer who is on the fence and they're trying to decide. Um, if you guys haven't subscribed as well, do make sure to subscribe. I have a huge, huge perfume haul coming after my Black Friday and Cyber Monday hauls. That'll be coming up later this week. And I will also be announcing the winner to last video's giveaway as well. So yeah, without further ado, let's just get right on into it. Okay guys, so first we're going to compare two of my absolute favorite, favorite vanilla fragrances. To be very fair, I am still pretty new to the niche world. I probably have about... I don't know, maybe seven or eight, I don't know, maybe 10 niche fragrances max, depending on what you kind of consider niche. Um, and anyways, these are two of my favorite niche vanillas. So we have Van Cleef and Arpels Orchidée Vanille from the collection Extraordinaire. Um, and I really like this one. I've had this one for a little bit longer. And then we also have Nishane Annie, Extrait de Parfum, which I just got last week. So let's start off and talk about the Orchidée Vanille from Van Cleef and Arpels. This is basically a really sweet, warm, cozy vanilla scent, but it also has a spin of chocolate and a little bit of a spin of some orangey notes. This has vanilla orchid, it has vanilla, it has tonka bean, bitter almond, it has mandarin orange, it has a little bit of musk, it has um, cedar in it. It's not a super woody fragrance. This one definitely leans a little bit more into the gourmand direction as compared to the Nishane Annie. Um, this is a really warm, very cozy, inviting vanilla scent. I think this has pretty good performance. I think I've seen one or two people say that they didn't think that it has great performance, but Every time I've worn it, I've had compliments. I can tell that it's projecting. I can smell it on myself all day. So I think this has pretty good performance, especially on your clothing. And if you're anything like me, I spray my clothes or I spray my perfumes on my skin and on my clothing. And I have no performance issues with this whatsoever. This is a little bit weaker than the Nishani Annie though. I will say that. Um, but still overall a great high quality perfume with pretty good performance. So what I get from this one mostly is first and foremost vanilla. I really pick up strongly on that orange that's in there, that bitter almond, and also that little bit of a chocolatey vibe. So this is not just a straight up vanilla and orchid as the name would suggest. You do get a little bit of those floral notes in the background, but for me this is mostly vanilla, orange, and chocolate. Yeah, I really like this. When I first got it, I wasn't 100% sure how I felt about the orange that was in there um, because I'm not, I'm just not a big orange fan. It kind of reminded me of those Christmas oranges that you can get that are like chocolate orange flavor chocolates essentially. I'll put a picture, um, but I really don't like those. <laughs> I've never liked those those chocolatey oranges or those orange chocolates, whatever you want to call them. So I, when I first smelled this, that's what it reminded me of. And I was like, oh no. But actually, um, this has become one of my favorite, favorite, favorite vanillas. I like it a lot. I haven't worn it a lot recently because I do have too many perfumes in my collection. But that being said, I have put a little bit of a dent in it. So this is beautiful, a little bit more gourmand, a little bit floral. I think it's a pretty safe blind buy. It's also not terribly expensive either, especially if you get it from a discount website. So next let's talk about Nishane Annie. And this one is quite different from the Orchidée Vanille um, in a number of ways. So for one thing, this is a lot less gourmand than the Orchidée Vanille. This one does have quite a few gourmand notes, but how it comes across and how it plays for me is this becomes much more of a woody scent. It's much more of a natural woody earthy scent compared to the Orchidée Vanille. So this one has notes of ginger, bergamot, pink pepper, and green notes in the opening. It has some black currant. It has cardamom. It also has quite a heavy dose of vanilla, of course, and it's got sandalwood, benzoin, cedar, patchouli, ambergris, and musk. This perfume essentially for me, what I get is a very fresh spicy and yet a little bit of a warm spicy. It's got a very interesting combination of spiciness in the opening because you get that fresh spicy from the bergamot and the pink pepper and the green notes, which makes it smell very light and vibrant and citrusy. But then you also get that cardamom and that ginger, which gives it a little bit of a warmth as well. So it's quite an interesting spicy opening with this perfume. Then you get that dry down and that as it continues to settle on your skin, you get a lot more of that vanilla and that woodiness. So in regards to how the perfume changes, this one is quite a lot different from the Orchidée Vanille. The Orchidée Vanille is a lot more linear than this one. This one changes a lot for me. The spiciness never 
really goes away 100%, which is I think what makes Nishane Annie very interesting. So if you don't like spicy scents and you don't like ginger and you don't like fresh notes or cardamom or anything like that, this would not be the one for you. I don't think this is a safe blind buy. I did not blind buy this. I bought this after having a decant and I fell in love with it right, out, right away out of the decant. I just loved it. It was so unique and so beautiful and I hadn't smelled anything quite like it before. Um, but I don't think it's a safe blind buy because this one also does lean a little bit more masculine compared to the Orchid Avene. If anyone was going to be a little bit more challenging for your nose, it would be this one. Um, it is a beautiful, beautiful scent. The dry down of this blows my mind. I love it so much. This also has incredible um, performance. This, like one or two sprays, the back of your hand is shiny. It will last you all day. It will last you into the night. The scent bubble is great. It's so good for the fall and the winter. Both of these are great for fall, winter, um, colder weather. Orchid Avenue, a little bit more feminine. It doesn't last quite as long. This one's more gourmand. This one's more woody. This one's a little bit easier to understand. This one's more complex. So it kind of depends what you're looking for. I love them both. I, I want them both. I'm not at all considering like getting rid of one for the other because they're both such good vanillas. And that being said, if you tell me to pick one, I don't know if I can pick just one. So yeah, I'm going to call this a tie because I don't think I can pick just one. I do apologize, but I'm going to tie these two because they are so similar um, in terms of the category, but they're also very, very different and they're worth having both. So that is your Nishane Annie and your Orchid Avene, two very, very different vanillas, but two very beautiful and delicious vanillas. Okay guys, so now we have four beautiful, more citrusy and or musky and or fresh scents in front of us. Um, I like all of these. I have a very clear, um, I have a very clear vision though of which ones I really like. So I don't have all of the notes of all of these in front of me. I'll kind of tell you like the main notes, what I pick up from each of them, um, the vibe I get, the performance of these three. I haven't had a chance to really, really test out the Chloe Nomad yet or the Shiseido Zen because I just got both of them. This one I just got last week. This one I got two or three weeks ago, um, but I have worn the other two. That being said, I have worn these ones on my skin at home, so I can kind of tell you a little bit about them. Um, so essentially we have Chanel Chance Eau Fraiche. We have Chloe Nomad Eau de Parfum. We have Coco Mademoiselle Eau de Parfum. And we have Shiseido Zen, also an Eau de Parfum. No, wait, sorry, this one's at Eau de Toilette. This is the only one out of the four that is an Eau de Toilette. So let's start off with the Chanel Chance Eau Fraiche. This is one of my favorite, well, first of all, I love all of the Chanel Chance perfumes. So this one here is your most true citrus, your most true, like, um, lemony, limey, bergamotty type of fresh citrus out of all the ones that you see here in front of me. This one has that beautiful Chanel Chance kind of vibe that underlies it and I absolutely love it. This one for being an eau de toilette is not bad for performance. It doesn't last forever. It's, I would say, weak to moderate in terms of lasting power, but it does project really well and it has a really nice scent bubble and I get compliments from my boyfriend whenever I wear this. It's just a beautiful, fresh, to me, it's like a fresh, sexy, scent. I think you could wear this for all occasions, especially in the warm weather, to the office, out and about running errands. I do really like this one. This is one of my favorite fresh scents and this is the most true like citrusy scent that I have in my collection and I love 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 this. This is like a 9 out of 10 for me, 10 out of 10 kind of fragrance. Now let's quickly talk about Shiseido Zen. So this one was a blind buy for me. I'd seen quite a few people recommending it. It's popped up all over social media, all over Fragrantica. A lot of people said that this was like a mainstay, top 10 for life kind of thing. And this one is also a very citrusy, fresh scent. But this one I think has a little bit more greenness to it. It's got a couple more green notes. It's got a little bit more of a musky woodiness to it compared to the Chanel Chance Eau Fraiche. This one also smells very sophisticated, um, a little bit more mature. I don't think this one is quite as fun loving and as youthful. This one I think is like your typical go-to, um, can't go wrong kind of fresh everyday scent. I do like this. I will say that this is not my favorite favorite. Out of the four sitting here in front of me, this is probably my least favorite. And that's probably just because I love the other three so, so much. <laughs> um, but this one is very nice. It reminds me of something I've smelt before. I feel like I've smelt it on either an ant or a boss or somebody I've seen in the past. 
Um, it has a very mature woman vibe to me. It also has a very relaxing kind of a green vibe. It reminds me of bamboo. It reminds me of a spa. Um, and at the same time, it's very citrusy and fresh. On the skin, this does pull a little bit more citrusy for me. Yeah, but this is kind of just a light, relaxing, musky, easy to wear, grab and go kind of fresh scent. So that is Shiseido Zen. In terms of lasting power, um, I haven't really, like I say, I haven't really had a chance to wear this out for like a whole day and really test it out. I still prefer the Chanel Chance Eau Fraiche over the Zen for sure. So now let's talk about Coco Mademoiselle. So this one, you guys probably all know what this smells like, but this one is also a very fresh, clean, soapy scent. This one I think is probably the most soapy out of all the ones I'm sharing with you right now. Um, this one also has orange and tonka bean. So it's a little bit different than the other ones. This one has a touch of sweetness. It's got a touch of that like underlying tonka bean, almost vanillic kind of a vibe to it. Some people have actually said that they think this is too sweet. This one also I think has the most classic, sophisticated, high-class um, vibe out of all of the ones I'm sharing with you today. I think this one is definitely your most corporate. This one is your most bougie. Yeah, this one just has an element of sophistication to it that is hard to match. I love this. I don't know very many people who don't like this. Um, yeah, just a beautiful, citrusy, um, slightly musky, clean, soapy tonka bean and with a hint of orange fragrance and I love it. This is a staple, it's a must have, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. Um, great lasting power, great performance. Yeah, it's just good all the way around. And I think again, many age groups can get away with this one as well, whereas I do find the Shiseido Zen to be a touch more mature. And I think the Chanel Chance is a little bit more like youthful. Now let's talk about Chloe Nomad. So this is one of the newest ones to my collection. This one actually took a long time to grow on me because when I smelt it in the store, I found it to be very, um, I don't know, it just, it just had a vibe that I didn't like, but that was on paper. Once I actually got a sample of it, brought it home, tried it on my skin, smelt it in the comfort of my own home, I absolutely fell in love with it, and then I had to have a bottle. So this one, out of all of them, I would say is the most masculine. This one has a little bit more of an earthy feel, a little bit more oak mossy. This one does also have some citruses in the opening. It has musk, it has a couple of floral notes. I absolutely love this, you guys. This one for me reminds me of, I always say it, and I know it sounds weird, but it reminds me a little bit of shaving cream or like barbershop vibe, which I love. It has a little bit of a masculinity to it, but it also has a little bit of this sweetness because it does have um, Mirabelle, which is like a yellow fruit in the opening. It's got this subtle feminine softness and sweetness to it, but it also has this like woody masculinity about it. And then it has that citrus and I just love this. This is intoxicating to me. It's so good. I just can come up and smell this bottle all day long. It just makes me so, so happy. This also has pretty good performance. I would say this probably lasts longer than the Chanel Chance Eau Fraiche, but probably not as long as the Coco Mademoiselle. Um, so it's moderate. It's pretty good. Yeah, and I think it's verging on being sexy as well because it's like a clean, it's like a clean fresh. So you guys, in terms of which one here is the winner, which one's the quote unquote loser, or like which one I don't like as much, I don't think that I can choose just one that I absolutely love the most out of all of these because these three are very different citruses and I love all three of them pretty much equally and for different reasons. The one that is my obvious least favorite, I would have to say is the Shiseido Zen and I don't know what why that is. It's a subjective personal preference. I'm sure there's some people out there who much, much prefer Shiseido Zen to any of these, but for me, the Shiseido Zen is kind of the least least remarkable, um, least special sort of, it's your most like easygoing grab and go. Um, but if I have to choose, I would definitely pick these three over the Shiseido Zen. And in fact, I'm gonna just put it out there right now. I might not have Shiseido Zen forever because this was a blind buy and I, I just don't love, love, love it as much as the other ones. I really like it. I'm pleasantly surprised by it. I think it's very pretty, but that's about it. It's, I think if I would have smelt it in the store, I don't think I would have picked up a bottle and brought it home with me. Um, yeah, so that's really all I have to say about those ones. Longest lasting out of this bunch, definitely the Coco Mademoiselle. So that is my take on those four. I'm gonna call these three 
my favorites, my ties, my whatever you want to call them. I don't think I would ever consider getting rid of one of these in favor of the other because they're all so different and I like them so much. And in terms of which one I think is more sophisticated, I say go for your Coco Mademoiselle. That's just my personal preference. And yeah, that's all I have to say about those four. So that's it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you really enjoyed. Do head on over and follow me on Instagram if you haven't already, where I share a lot of little things that I don't share here on YouTube. And also we have lots of really good conversations. I have been making friends all over the world thanks to the perfume community and YouTube, and I'm so grateful for you guys. And I'll see you guys all next time. Bye for now.